The kidnapping and murder of the Lindbergh baby back in the 30s is one of the great all-time mysteries. It was the crime of the century. Charles Lindbergh was the famous pilot and his baby was taken for ransom. Bruno Hopman was executed for the crime, but he never would name who was in it with him. Now, author Robert Zorn claims he knows who else is responsible, and he is joining us this morning. Now, there's a Detroit tie to this. You were involved in a family reunion last night. Yes, I was. Uh, I, I, after my father's death, my father was the only witness to a conspiracy involving Hauptman and Cemetery John. There was a kidnapper calling himself John who collected a $50,000 ransom in a Bronx cemetery, became known as Cemetery John. He was the mastermind of this crime, and his identity has remained a mystery after, for, for 80 years. And the great untold story here is that I'm the son of the only person who wi un unwittingly witnessed Cemetery John meeting with Hauptman at a New Jersey amusement park and speaking in German uh, with John. This fellow was named John Null. He lived three doors down from my dad. He was a German immigrant deli clerk, and he was speaking in German in front of my dad and speaking about to a guy named Bruno, who undoubtedly was Hauptman, about Englewood, the name of the town where the Lindberghs were living in 1931. But he didn't realize at the time. Yes, that's exactly right. It, my father unwittingly witnessed this, and this was nine months before the crime took place. And my father grew up and became a nationally recognized economist in Dallas, and one day, decades later, walked into his barber shop, happened to cross an article about the kidnapping and in True Magazine, and learned details about the crime with which he was never familiar, including the existence of this cemetery, John, and realized that, in fact, it was his neighbor, John Knoll. And the, 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 not only does the 1932 police sketch of Cemetery John make, it's, it's identical to, to the photographs of John Knoll, but the physical description of Cemetery John matches that of John Knoll right down to a deformed left thumb. Advanced handwriting techniques show that John Knoll's handwriting appeared on ransom envelopes, but not only that, even three weeks before Hauptman went on trial for murder in New Jersey, John Knoll, the German immigrant Depression-era deli clerk, spent the equivalent of 70 months rent to, uh, to purchase two first-class round-trip tickets aboard the luxury liner SS Manhattan to go to Germany, and the very day of Hauptmann's conviction, February 13, 1935, at which point John Knoll obviously knew that Hauptmann not, had not ratted him out on the witness stand, is the day that Knoll left Germany to return to the States. I could go on and on and on with the evidence that point squarely at this man as the mastermind of, the, of this kidnapping, and he also I've dealt with the world's leading FBI profiler. I was going to say, people have confirmed your account. You promised your dad on his deathbed that yes. you would go ahead with this story. Yes, and I embarked, my dad died five years ago, Christmas Eve, and I embarked on a eight or ten hour a day, three year research odyssey, crisscrossing the states in Germany in search of the truth and came up with one thing after another. And, and when I, and I'm, I'm a regular guy. I'm not a, a profiler or a, or a prosecutor or an investigative journalist, uh, but I took my evidence that I had compiled to the top New Jersey uh, prosecutors, including former Governor Byrne, said, absolutely, case closed, John Knoll did this. I took this to the top forensic scientist across a broad range of disciplines. And then the, some of the top FBI profilers in history, including John Douglas, who founded the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit, ran it for 25 years, is intimately familiar and has written about this case. And he said, after a six-hour initial meeting, when he's, you know, this is, a, this is obviously as a logic machine, it looks at facts and evidence, and he said, John Knoll's the best suspect in 80 years. If I had been advising the police, I'd have told him to put John Knoll right on the front burner, and he offered to write the, the foreword for my book, and we just finished our, our Nova documentary together. Well, we do have to go, but he has nieces and nephews here. The book is Cemetery John. Thank you so much. Mr. Zorn for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. It's great to be in the city where Charles Lindbergh was, was born, the great city of Detroit. Well, thank you and welcome. And Malcolm? Thank you, Mary. That is very fascinating. We have much more ahead.